Hey everyone, welcome to the first request video that I've decided to do for YouTube user Eamon Shokri. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to implement a camera style that is present in the game Color Switch that's available in the Android Play Store. So you'll notice when I move or tap the screen, the ball will move up. And as the ball crosses to about the halfway point of the screen, the camera moves up. But if I start falling, the camera doesn't move down with me. It just kind of stays at that maximum height that it hit or that I got to. So however high I get is however far the camera will move up. Some people have a hard time with this because it can be a little confusing to keep track of where the camera is in relation to like another um, body, but uh, it really is quite a simple feature to implement as far as a camera technique in comparison to some of the other ones that I've shown you guys. So we're gonna close that and quit all Chrome apps. Okay, and so you can kind of, I'm sure you got a good example of what we're gonna be doing here. Um, so what I have so far is a box 2D world. And if you don't know how to set up a box 2D world, that's okay. Um, you can use like sprites or anything, however your movement system is. Everything will be all relative to um, keeping track of uh, breaking like a certain height and we're just gonna have a variable that's gonna control that so as you can see like I'm pressing space right now and I can keep this ball like bouncing in the air and every time I press space it goes up um, by applying a force to the center of the ball I also made walls on the left and right hand side so we can kind of observe how high we've moved and as you see right now the camera isn't really doing anything it's just kind of stationary not moving and that can be observed by looking at the walls I made uh, specifically for that reason so we can see if the camera is moving or not. Um, without it, we wouldn't really know where we are in space uh, or in the game world because it would just be a lot of gray and a ball in the center. So that's the reason why the walls are there. Um, so yeah, that's all we really have so far. Uh, so let's jump into the code. Uh, if you haven't seen my box 2D tutorial methods, I definitely recommend it if you want to follow this particular part. Otherwise, if you're used to LibGDX and working with sprites and actors and all that kind of business, then uh, you should have no problem implementing this yourself because it's going to use a pretty open-ended uh, type of technique that you'll be able to apply in a lot of different places. So um, for the create ball, uh, it's just a simple circle shape. And then for the create walls, we're just using polygon shapes, setting as box. And I have a for loop that creates 20 of them on both the left and right hand side. So uh, we can move away from that. And in the create method, uh, I have my uh, sprite batch, my world, uh, my box 3D debug render. I really don't need the sprite batch because I'm not using it. Um, and I have a camera that's set to my virtual width and virtual height with zero being uh, the bottom left. And I have the ball body and the walls get created. So with that, uh, you'll also notice in my update method that I get that I call in render, um, that I can press space. I have a is key just pressed, checking if I press space. And I set the ball body's linear velocity um, on the x axis to be zero. Again, this is really loosely handling the actual game development part of it itself. I'm just going for the camera motion. So I want to rely on these as the, the best way to implement this stuff. Um, and then I have, I clamp uh, the ball body's current velocity uh, zero being like so I can stop it immediately and uh, I can apply the force to the center that way it's I'm not acting against downward velocity um, I just kind of reset it to zero that gives that ball that continuous momentum up every time I tap um, just so you guys are aware for a little tip if you're doing anything in box 2d um, and then I apply that force to the center which gives it that kick that pops the ball up um, and then I also update my camera um, because we will be translating the camera based on where this ball body is in the world. So to get right to it, um, we're going to need to keep track of the maximum height we've reached with our ball. So we can just call this uh, camera max. Uh, camera max Y, actually. That'll be a little bit uh, more verbose for us. So once now that we have that variable and 
our world is set up to where right when we start the ball is centered and um, this point is 320 uh, 320 by 240 I think that's the or yeah X and Y is 240 by 320 so yeah this this Y right here is 320 so that's where everything's kind of starting out so it might just be easy to say camera max dot y equals camera dot position dot y and so we're just setting it to where the camera started um, and if the ball goes above this camera threshold then we'll increase that depending on where the ball got to so uh, this is pretty easy to set up as I mentioned all you have to do is go into your update method and um, you'll have the or I should probably not put this around my input code um, I'll put it below so if the ball body get position dot y and I'm using 32 as my pixel per meter ratio here. That's why I'm multiplying it by 32. Always remember, uh, again, it's good to keep this out as a constant, um, but I'm just doing it in line for now. And camera dot max y. So we're saying here, if the ball is above what our camera max y got to, then we want to translate the camera to the new position. So uh, camera dot translate we're not going to be moving on the X axis but we are going to be moving on the Y axis so get position dot Y multiply that by 32 and because we're translating which means we're adding or subtracting from the current position by set amount we're not setting the position of the camera um, that's the difference with translate and move um, we're going to subtract whatever the old camera max Y was. And once that's done, uh, you'll notice that the camera will translate appropriately, but we also uh, have to make sure to set the camera max Y to the new position that we got to. So as you see, it just keeps increasing. And that's because um, the ball body's position was staying higher than camera max y because we never set the camera max y to the new position so we're gonna have to you know what let's move this camera dot update uh, out into here and then we'll also have the camera max y equals um, camera dot position dot y so make sure to update after you've made the translate otherwise you're just gonna get the old camera Y value so now that you have that um, we should be able to observe that it is moving as we expected and so now I'll press space you'll see I can let go and the ball will fall down all the way and if I keep going and pressing space it'll keep shifting our camera up and climbing that ladder that we were looking for so I can keep pressing space and of course, if you wanted to get the actual game, well, that'll be more up to you to do the copycat, but um, this will at least get you started with learning how to do um, like limited camera heights, so, or progressive camera heights. Um, this can also be applied to in like the X scale, or uh, yeah, the X plane. That way you can have a game such as like Super Mario or something. And so like however far your character goes, um, the X value won't change. So with that, uh, hopefully you learned something new and can kind of see how this how this might be applied in, in other games using like uh, Scene 2D with actors. Uh, you just replace this ball body dot cat position times 32 with uh, like whatever your actor's position vector is. Um, and same goes for here so these are like is the position of whatever actor I'm paying attention to greater than the threshold I'm at then increase it and then set the new max to whatever I updated to so with that I'll see you guys in the next one and thanks for watching